welcome back to Grey Matter. I've been waiting all week to play this again. This is... I, I could have played it earlier, of course, but... Man, this is a... So far, a really, really fun game. Unfortunately, it hasn't really gotten that many views yet, but that can pick up. Who knows? Um, in the last uh, session, last time, we... Well, let's uh, sum up the story so far. We arrived at a old English manor, which we gained access to by pretending we were someone else, or at least that we were there for different reasons. And we decided to kind of stay, I guess, and got a job for this weird doctor guy. He sent us into Oxford to find some students to help him with some experiment. Which didn't really seem that easy, because apparently the doctor has some kind of reputation. Uh, so instead, we went to a magic shop, which is where we are now. And, uh... What's her name? I forgot what she's called. Uh... Let's see, we can see what she's called in here, actually. Sam! Samantha! Sam is right here. And uh, this guy is really odd, and I can't speak to him anymore, apparently. The, the only thing left to do in here is this thing. There's some kind of puzzle. But, to be honest, I don't really know what the puzzle is about. I mean, it doesn't really... You must be 21. Oh, wait. Do I need to make it 21? Uh, what is 21? I'm thinking... The jack would be 11. That's 21. Or maybe it's like... Isn't like, uh... 21. That did it. Yeah! I was thinking about blackjack, and that's like what you get with a, when you get blackjack. Oh my god, I actually solved the puzzle. I was about to skip it. Awesome! That's the Deedless Club logo. Yeah. Uh... You must be 21. Do I get a prize? I guess I'll talk to that guy again. Hey, dude! Dude. No, wait. Do I like get a prize or anything? You must be twenty. Yeah, I I got that part. That's the. De I solved the. Oh wait. This is a deedless club riddle, my first one. Ooh, five pieces of gold in the scholar's heart, where high above high, high above high and. Reigning over Queen, find the room with the view, the quadrificus, then fire, water, earth, wind, and the fifth is at the end, where souls choose their fate. All together they point to a place, there enter the name of one of the one who sold his soul for thirty. Sold his soul for 30? Is that like Judas? Didn't he like sell his... Sell out Jesus for like 30 pieces of silver? I think... Okay, five pieces of gold in the scholar's heart. Where high above high and reigning over queen. Find the room with the view, the quadrificus. Then fire... Okay. Well, that's confusing. Can we talk to him now? Yes, we can. Hey, we solved your puzzle box. The scholar's heart. Now, let's talk about winning the game first. What happens if I win the game? What happens? <laughs> Only one way to find out. I guess that's right. The riddle says something about the scholar's heart. Is that a particular part of Oxford? I'm not familiar with the city. I would take that to mean the heart of the university, which is where you are right now. But I wouldn't depend on my help if I were you. I'm a miser with it, for one thing. And if you got aid, how would you know if you were worthy of the game? And the game of you. Well, I didn't. True. Right. Never mind. All right. I... 
I was about to say, oh, this is the this game. I I don't know this puzzle. I don't know how to solve. So we should just leave. But then I saw the whole twenty one thing. I, I saw that in the last episode, but I just thought, hey, that's the gambling loss. But it isn't really the gambling loss in Britain, I believe. Alright! Oh, that was cool. So we have a... Uh, quad... Can I read the puzzle again? That quad thing? That's, uh... What is it? Quadrificus. Quad. That's four. So it's something with... Find the room with the view. With this four is a sides. Club riddle. High above, so it's up. I don't know. I'll, I'll keep my eyes open. Uh, oh, this is open, but we can't go in. It's not probably not important. Carfax. I don't know what that is, but I got all excited anyway. Ah, yeah, this is a really fun game. Wait a minute. This is where I started. I've been walking in circles. I need to find, uh, oh wait, 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 high above. Stop, stop walking. Oh, you can't cancel it, apparently. That's, uh, uh that's kind of dumb. First floor of the game. But the only one so far. But yeah, apparently if I give her an order, I can't cancel. Let's talk to this guy again. So I can go in here? I should probably do that. What Chance is of it? a lifetime, or at the very least, the most fun you've ever had in a straitjacket. <laughs> Just a little neurobiology humor there. <laughs> Not bloody likely. Look, you won't find anyone stupid enough to do an experiment with styles. I guarantee it. But that's my job. Oh. That's the. the oh yeah. There's got to be somebody stupid enough in Oxford, or maybe not. <laughs> if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Sorry, Houdini. I tried. Uh, hey, wait, wait, wait. What are you doing? Okay. First what? year student orientation party at St. Edmund's Quad. It's today. Quad. Freshman. Quad. Yeah, oh, freshman. That means that we can, you know... What the hell is that? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. Your ID, please. Driver's license? Student ID. Oh, yeah. Oh, that. I left it in my room. Sorry. Not so force. Them's the rules and there's the street. Have a nice day. Thanks. Okay. What does this mean? There's nothing with a mouse over it. I'm afraid that it's like a hint or something. I don't want to press it if it's a hint. Ah, screw it. Okay, so we... Do we need to get in here? A lion and a unicorn. Okay, we already saw that. I think we need to get in here, so we need a... student ID. Maybe a fake ID? Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Corn Market Street. Let's go to the corn market and buy some corn. There's probably no corn. Yeah, I was right. You bloody liars. So this will just make me walk in a circle again, right? Yeah. Or maybe I don't need to get in there. Or maybe I need to go somewhere else. I need to go to the big map. Because there might be a new area open up. Look, that star has my name. Uh, I pointed that out in the last episode, too. I'm full of repetition. Oh, God. I don't want to become like that. Um, how do I get... Oh, what's this? Let's look at this, actually. First year student no, orientation I party at St. Edmund's Quad. Fresh... I wanted to look at it. How do I get out to the big map? M. Yeah, okay. Aha! See? I was right. What's this? Uh, here we go. So you can lure some freshmen into 
doing the experiment because they never heard of the doctor. Wow. This place is, uh... Oh, come on. What do you want, blood? I told you I'd delete your scene. And I'm supposed to trust you. What? Please, I'm whining now. I'm whimpering. You're killing me here. Maybe you'll think twice next time. I've nothing more to say to you. Uh, okay. Yeah, this place looks kind of run down. <laughs> Overgrown. Let's look at the banner. Hmm, no doubt I'm in the right place. Let's hope I can recruit enough rookies. Oh, let's go eat some of the food. So, uh, we got some different people here. So I can talk to this guy, but the other ones I can only look at. Apparently, she thinks she's on the French Riviera. Not really my type, but beggars can't be choosers. So I can see her name, actually. Helena Bogard. And this one is Angela Mulholland. Harvey Kinderman. How do I know their names? And th <laughs> this is just Lisa. She has no last names, like Madonna and Cher. Uh, I think I'm going to talk to this guy first. He seems interesting. Hey, hi. Sorry to bother you, but I overheard your accent. You're an American? Yeah. Me too. I'm Sam from DC. I'm Harv. Harvey Kinderman. The Big Apple. You don't look American, you know. Maybe... French. What? Oh, come on. There are a lot of people like me in New York. I guess. Those French are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to see you still have your sense of humor. I noticed you were fighting with your girlfriend. Girlfriend? President of the Lynch Harvey Kinderman Club is more like it. You haven't been here long enough to get into trouble, have you? Are you kidding? I can get people to hate me in under 10 seconds flat. <laughs> that girl, for instance, Lisa, she loathes me to the point of breaking into my room and deleting my latest film from my computer. And she took the only hard copy I had. Kinderman masterpiece. Gone. And I've known her less than two weeks. I'm telling you, it's a gift. <laughs> uh, what did she do? Cash or films? What is she studying? Where is the movie? Uh, why did she do it? Sorry, I read that wrong. Why did she do it? Why would Lisa do something like that? No reason on God's earth. Hmm. She's in the film, right? What'd you get her doing? Well, it was uh, a commode soliloquy. Artistic truth, man. I mean, the film's about superficiality and how we're all really just flesh and blood underneath all the glamour. I'll buy that, but I wouldn't if I were Lisa. Uh. She didn't. She's pretty much being a major B on toast. She had her do nude scenes, right? Oh, can we get that movie? Uh, <laughs> cash for films. Say, I bet you could use some extra cash. You know, for film or production costs or whatever. What's the catch? My prof has this little experiment going on tonight. It's, um, a neurobiology thing. Easy as pie, and it pays 15 pounds for just a few hours of work. Boy, have you got the wrong guy. I won't even go to the dentist. And the last time I had uh. blood drawn, they had to call in the National Guard. I don't want anything to do with needles. Anything needle-like. Or anything that involves putting anything small and shiny anywhere close to my skin. Even jewelry makes me nervous. <laughs> We had to find five guy, five people. I think this is not going well. Uh, what, what are you, what's he studying? What are you studying, Harv? Technically, well, technically, I'm in the international law program. But not really. No, I am. It's just, you know how you can get splinters under your nail and it bleeds and stuff under there, and it hurts so bad you just want to hit something. Law is kind of like that <laughs> for me. And you're studying it. Why? My dad, he has this high hopes thing. Talk about guilt. But hey, it's fine. I'm in England, and I wanted a chance to check out British filmmakers, so it works, mostly. Gee, suck it up and tell him, Hart. It's your life. Yeah, thanks. I'll get right on that. There's a lot of great British filmmakers. I think one of my favorite, well, Terry Gilliam is technically British, although most of his movies are, I think, made in America, in the US, and Canada. 
but technically he still is British, so he's, he's one of them. And another really great British uh, filmmaker is Peter Greenaway. If you haven't, go ch check him out. He makes some amazing movies. Peter Greenaway, really. But it's not for everybody, I can tell you that. But really, he is amazing. Um, where is the movie? Does Lisa have your movie with her? Yeah, it's in that Godzilla purse of hers. I would have kicked her shins and run with it, but then she'd have to hurt me. Is it on <laughs> DVD? Super 8, why? Do you have a spare Super 8 film cartridge with you? Uh, yeah. Again, why? Just weigh my options. Oh, we're gonna do magic tricks. You have options? Wow, can I have some? I'm fresh out. <laughs> All right. How badly do you want that movie back, Kinderman? You shouldn't call me by my last name. It uh, turns me on. Listen, if you do this experiment <laughs> for me tonight, I'll get your cartridge back. What is this, Torture Harvey Day? Do yeah. I get my choice of the guillotine or the rope? Is that it? Stop being a wuss. This thing tonight isn't gonna hurt or anything. Besides, I thought your film was Orwellian. Do you want to be talking about it at the age of 50 in the actor studio as your lost masterpiece? Sheesh, turn the screws. All right, all right. But what are you planning to do? Trust me, she won't feel a thing. Give me the spare cartridge. This ought to be interesting. Hmm. Oh, this is going to... Okay, we need to... Can I not talk with her now? No, now I have to do a magic trick on her. Let's look in my magic handbook. And see what trick could be done. We need to... How do I turn the pages? How do I turn the pages? Well, just the arrow keys. Uh, the logger room mystery, there's no... Divide and conquer, no. Hmm. Are any of these... It doesn't seem like any of these... Could be used. So I guess, but there were, there were the ones at the beginning, the, 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 the terms, different terms, right here. Yeah, you see here, we have some palm, vanish, move an object from hand to hand. Take an object from the environment into hand. I need something that will make, take one thing and place another. So it's a taken plant. And misdirect. So I need to misdirect, take, and plant. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't even know if this is... Okay, we're gonna do a magic trick on her, it seems. Let's look at the trash can. Oh, wait. That's a leaf burner. It's a barrel of burning leaves. Hmm. That's a smell second only to new car leather. And maybe chocolate. Wait, that smells good? Burning, does burning leaves smell good? I don't think I've ever smelled burning leaves. Maybe I have. So we're gonna do a magic trick on her. Yeah, I can take her down, no problem. But first, I need to pick the right trick. Oh. I don't think that really applies. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the destroyed and restored. No, the locker room mystery. Uh no. Divide and conquer. No, that's... Wait. Uh, that's something with a card of decks. A deck of cards. The shredded and restored newspaper. The le great disappearing ink trick. I don't... Aha, uh -huh, maybe this one. First, you need an unopened ma mail. While... Uh, simple misdirect while you take the letter from your left hand. And then vanish it up your left sleeve. No, that doesn't seem right. Okay, uh, this is always a hit pa party routine. You invite fr uh, members of the audience to help you think of names from different fruits. That sound doesn't sound like something that would be... 
I don't know what trick to use. Do I wonder if we get more tricks. I need something that will make... See, this is the basic moves. Like I said, I need something. Misdirect. Then move, take and play, plant. So let's see if we got some of the point, the noise, palm, manipulate, no. Uh, load. Wait a minute. Load the copy of, of your left sleeve. Take the real paper article. This might be it. Palm the copy. Move the real paper article. Misdirect the audience. Move any. That trick doesn't fit the situation. Okay. I could technically just press all of them, but I'm actually trying to. Ah, oh, here we go. Misdirect while you take the letter. This huh, one. I like that one, but it doesn't really make sense in this case. God damn it. I should read all of these. There's just so many. Aha. Uh -huh. Palm, take, misdirect. This one, the bottomless cup. That trick doesn't fit. Okay, I'm so wrong with all of these. Uh, take, palm, move, Mr. This one. Yes, that should oh. work. Okay. Welcome to the magic interface. Oh, this is awesome. This is where Sam prepares herself for a trick. Once she has the trick sequence in steps in mind, she will perform the trick. Sam must adapt the trick from the magic book to the situation at hand. To open the magic book for reference, click on its icon in the upper right corner. Uh, the action window on the right represents Sam uh, and her environment. Plan the trick step by step. Dra drag items into the various slots and select basic moves. Oh, this is going to be fun. Load, vanish, take, plant, palm, or move an item by dragging it into one of the available slots. These appear with gold, with gold tiles. Here is an inventory item required for the trick, the tape. Use it by dragging it into the appropriate slot in the action window. Uh, that one. The sequencer window on the left shows the number of steps required for the trick and list of sequences and actions you have selected so far. You can delete a whole series of steps from the sequencer by clicking on the number of the, of the last step you want removed. You can also use the right mouse button to backtrack one step at a time. Okay, let's look at... Uh, refer to the instructions in the magic book. Click on its icon in the upper right corner again to put the book aside. Okay, so it, so this up in smoke was the trick we needed to do. Let's read it. The audience gazes in wonder as you have a volunteer sign cards in a deck and then burn it into ashes. You later magically produce a deck that has a has the signed cards. The secret: switch the deck before burning it. You need two identical decks of cards. One, oh, I know, oh, oh, time out, time out. I know what we're doing here. We're saying, hey, why don't we just burn this movie of his? Because she's talking to a person that hates the movie. So we'll just burn it, but then we switch it. Oh my god, this is amazing. I never thought about that. I should have thought of that since the the leaf burner was right there. Okay, uh, the, 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 the secret switch today. Okay, you need two identical decks of cards. One should be signed by the audience member, the other is a duplicate deck. That's the 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 movies. Load the duplicate deck to your left sleeve. We already done that. I think. Left sleeve. There we go. Okay. Uh, take the signed deck in your right hand. Uh, there we go. That's two steps. Um, 
palm the duplicate in your left hand. Manipulate, manipulate, misdirect, left sleeve. Oh, wait, 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 left sleeve. Here, there we go. Let's actually close this for a moment. Take spare cartridge in left hand. Oh, wait, okay, delete, delete. Okay, so first we needed to uh, load the duplicate in your left sleeve. Wait. Load spare cartridge in the left sleeve. Spare cartridge. Left. No. I'm confused. But that's... So I guess, load the duplicate in your left sleeve. It's, it's it's like there's some text missing here. Load spare cartridge in left sleeve. Right there. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now I'm with it. With it. I'm going to take that and put that in the hand. Okay. Uh, palm the duplicate deck in your left hand. There. See if that the uh, palm spare. Yes. All right. Move the signed deck from your right hand to your left, turning it as if you're examining its backside. There we go. Misdirect your audience. This move allows sound to misdirect your audience for a few seconds. Click on the icon to add this move to the sequencer. I did that, right? Misdirect, yes. Uh, take hold of the duplicate deck that is underneath the signed deck in your left palm and move the duplicate deck to your right hand. Go vanish the signed deck up your left sleeve. A magic wand icon appears when the sequence is complete. Click on the icon to confirm the trick. If any of the steps were wrong, you'll need to continue planning the trick from the last correct step. Oh, this is fun! I think this one is right. Okay, load spare cartridge. In left sleeve, take Lisa's cartridge in right hand, s palm spare cartridge in left hand, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we already said, I don't need to go with that again. Let's do it! Yeah, magic time! Hi. I saw you talking to Harvey Kinderman. I wanted to warn you about him. Seriously. You're a little late. You're joking. Did he film you? As a matter of fact, he did. You don't mean to say he filmed you, too. Oh, yeah. sure did. I was at a party a couple of nights ago, and I was feeling sick, so I went outside to, you know, be sick. I looked up, and that degenerate was filming me, puking, in the bushes. He's a worm. I'm glad I'm making him suffer. You are? How? I've got the film he took of me, and it's the only copy, too. I made sure of that. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I deleted it from his computer myself. Are you sure you got the right cartridge, though? I was in his room looking for mine, but there was so much crap everywhere. Most of the tapes weren't even labeled. I bet you didn't get the right one. I have the cartridge. This is the name of the film he said he was making. It's on the label. Can I see? Careful with that. You know what I'd do if I were you? See that barrel over there? What are you? Wait a minute! There! Now you'll be sure that no one will ever see it. What a nerve! Americans! <laughs> we did it! Oh yeah, magic, baby! Tell me you didn't just burn my film! Hey, this is it! What are you, like the amazing Kreskin or something? Amazing I what? never saw you make the switcheroo! Yeah, forget it. But don't forget about tonight. You promise. I'll be there, never fear. Hey, I got my film back. 
And the best part is, Lisa thinks it's destroyed. We just helped the creep. Wow. <laughs> that was awesome. That was really fucking awesome. That was magic. Magic, I tell ya. Oh, let's look at that. It's a barrel of burning leaves. Oh. I was hoping you'd say something about the movie. Oh, that was really, really cool. Uh, let's talk to another one. Let's talk to this one over here. Helena Bogard. I know that name. Bogard? Bogard? Oh, Animal Crackers. Yeah, Bogard. Haha, <laughs> Animal Crackers. Hi, it's a good day for the sun thing. Oh, a diversion. Thank God. I was about to die of boredom. I'm Helena. Helena. Sam, Antha, or just Sam is fine too. You're Sam a student Anthe. here? You don't look like one. Well, of course you. I am. Are you? For two glorious weeks now. Time of my life. <sighs> Sorry, was drinking some water. Uh, the experiment, where are you from? What is she studying? Let's ask where she's from. Where are you from, Helena? You don't sound British. God, not remotely. I'm from a tiny little country. Oh. You wouldn't have heard of it. I wouldn't have heard of your country? Trust me. What? I doubt it. I've heard of most countries. Uh, what are, what you, are studying? you studying? Oh. <laughs> Art history, which isn't horrible. Oh, I do I have an not. interest in the subject. Antiques mostly. And paintings. That's why Papa sent me here. He said if I was going to spend money, I should at least know what I'm buying. Gee, sounds rough. You have no idea. Care for a vodka and soda? I can run up to my room and whip up another <laughs> one. Um, tempting, <laughs> but no. Maybe later. Suit yourself. What time is it? I don't think it's what it's drinking time yet. Uh, the experiment. If you're really bored, why don't you come with me tonight? To do what? I'm going to a psych experiment. Pretty amusing, actually. Very Dr. Strangelove. Not for me. I have plans for this body of mine. And no doctor's going to get his greedy little hands on it. It's just a psych thing. I'm sure Dr. Styles won't do any permanent damage. I'm not interested. Ah, come on. I take it you don't like Oxford. God, no. Papa insisted. He thinks I can't possibly get into trouble here. Well, I thought I'd show him. But now that I'm here, I think he might actually be right. What a pedestrian snore. <laughs> you look like someone who knows how to party. party. Where do you go? Haven't found much of a scene yet. Mostly pubs with fish and chips. <laughs> a snore like you... Fish and chips. What is it? Well, the one thing that can be said about Oxford is it has some delicious men. That is the plat du resistance. Nice. Plat nice. du resistance. Darling, that prime specimen is Charles Ettington. I've tried to talk to him a few times, but he's mortally shy. I think he might even be a virgin. Oh, you think? no. <laughs> Charles Eddington will be at this experiment I'm going to tonight. You're lying. Not. Why would he be in this psych experiment? I don't know. Maybe he needs money. Or maybe he's interested in neurobiology. You'd have to ask him. I doubt Charles Eddington needs money. In fact, I don't believe you even know him. Uh, we'll see about that, won't we? So we will talk to him. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll go talk to this guy. And my stomach is growling. Why is it growling? I just ate. Jesus. Maybe it's because I just ate. Hello. Mind if I hang around? I was supposed to meet a friend here. Uh, well... Uh, well... He does seem a little gun-shy. <laughs> I'd better figure out something specific to ask him. Chit-chat won't cut it. Yeah, there's a book right here. Homer's huh? Iliad. 
Ah, Homer Simpson. The letter on top is from Gertrude Eddington. I bet that's his mother. I'm gonna take that letter. The letter on top. I'll speak to him again. Uh, the Iliad. I see you're reading the Iliad. The Iliad and the Odyssey are my favorite ones. You've read the Iliad? No? Yeah, <laughs> but I like the Odyssey best. I love the gods and their infighting. Total soap opera. But my favorite part is where Odysseus comes home and Penelope has all those suitors, and you're just waiting for him to kick some serious tail. My favorite part is the Cyclops. I like the way they tie themselves under the sheep to escape. I love that part. Can you believe those were the I... first novels ever written? Oh. And Homer still beats the crap oh, out of anything Hollywood has put out, in my humble opinion. Absolutely. What's even more amazing is that he recited it from memory. Can you imagine hearing him do that? That would be amazing. Wow. Well, I'd uh, better get back to it. <laughs> I will feel a little dumb right now when he said, when they said, I like the, the, the Cyclops. I love how they tied themselves under sheep to escape. I was thinking, how do a Cyclops tie himself under a sheep? And I thought, like, oh, wait. It was the humans they were talking about. <laughs> Uh, letter from home. Did you get mail from home? Sorry. It's just that I've been expecting a letter from my mom for days. I'm beginning to think the Oxford Post is eating it. No. I've been here for two weeks, and I still haven't received a letter from my mom. She promised to write all the time. It doesn't take that long for stuff to get here from the U.S., does it? Don't know. Never got anything from there. <laughs> uh, of course not. Duh. I'm sorry. Ragging on like a total loser. I get mail every day. My mum, she writes to me every day. No nope. way. Wow. God, you're okay. lucky. I miss my mom so much. So how come you haven't opened it yet? Um, mum and I always ate dinner together, so I like to read it then. Aw, isn't that sweet? Mum and I love to ride bikes together. But reading her letters on a bike probably wouldn't be the best idea. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. A letter from his mother every day. I guess this would be what you'd call a mama's boy. Nothing wrong with that, I guess. It, it might be a little odd, if you'd say, and society would probably look a little weirdly at him. But, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a strong relationship with your mother. But I guess it is, in the same time, it is kind of healthy to maybe break that bond a little? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist or anything. But it, it does seem a little odd. Uh, the experiment. Listen, there's something you might be interested in. It's not for everyone. But since you like Homer, I've gotten into a psych experiment that's being done by one of the Oxford neurobiologists. It's really fascinating, and it pays cash. That would be interesting. But I'd need to check with my mum. She calls me on Saturdays. I could talk to her about uh, it then. But this starts tonight. Then I can't. Ah, oh, come on. I couldn't do something like that without talking to her. Anyway, I'm sure they'll do it again. Oh, no. Dr. Stiles is a really famous neurobiologist, and he almost never does this kind of thing. Oh, it will be so educational. I'm sure your mother would love for you to have an experience like this. That's what she sent you here for, isn't it? I can't without talking to her, sorry. Okay, no big deal. Okay, I uh, take it all back. That is not healthy. Far from it. Oh, we can do a magic trick on him. Why would we want to do a magic trick on him? Huh. 